Hello, I'm Rowena Starling, welcoming you to the Save Your Breath Show, where we help parents eliminate the stress and aggravation of raising children. Today, our guest on the show is Mr. Cedric Bertelli. Uh, but first, you're running feverishly down the street chasing a bus because you realize you've left your baby on it. You trip over a power line and fall flat on your face. <laughs> oh. Having left your baby on the bus means that you have been distracted by too many other things. Running after the bus, well, you know, we want our baby back. But tripping over the power line is about our inattention to the power within. What are power trips? In this instance, when I talk about power trips, I'm talking about those exchanges in, that we have with family and, and children where you're attempting to get your point across and you're actually both of you are attempting to get your point across and no one wants to give up the power. You want to have it exactly the way you want to have it no, obje no, no uh, you have no room for anyone else's opinion about it. It's going to be your way and no other way. And you can see that when, it's this especially with uh, teenagers, when the parent is engaging in a power trip and the teenager is engaging in a power trip and everybody's clashing, can you see the, how exhausting that is? What an energy drain that those kinds of encounters are. So when we're talking about power trips, the power trips have to do with the fact that you're expend, expending a lot of energy and power over something that can many times resolve itself if you would just relax and let it happen. There are other voices. There are other, there, your voice, uh, let me say it this way, your voice is not the only means of getting your point across. It's not your only means of teaching. There are other aspects about who the parent is that instructs the child, that teaches. Your composure teaches. Looking them in their eye teaches. Eyes teaches. Chilling, chill, the chill factor, that teaches. Having confidence teaches. It teaches our children, for instance, the confidence to have the confidence to go out into the world, they'll need this for themselves. They need to see and feel what this is about. It's the communicating, you know, feelings and understanding how the world works. So that when the child goes out into the world, they have an understanding of how to begin to exercise and use their confidence. Are you willing to save your breath? So why are there power trips? Well, <laughs> there are as many reasons for that as there are people. But many times, of course, it has to do with, you know, how you were raised, how you feel about your confidence level and your power. You, this is uh, many times an ego thing, these ego tripping type of uh, exchanges. And the thing to remember about it, it is, it, make a note of this, it's all about the moment. It's the moment. In that moment, now perhaps in the very moment you can't review why you're having such an issue with relinquishing the power or recognizing someone else's, um, but the point is if there is a, a point where you're stuck and you can recognize you're stuck there, Take some time out, take a separate moment for yourself, and examine that. And if you can't get to the core of it on your own, then come, especially in that moment, come up with a satisfactory answer or a reason for this particular stuckness, something that satisfies your ego. You know, make it as dramatic as you need it to be. And then, once you receive that feeling of aha about why that's happening, See if you can look again at the moment that you're addressing with your child or your family member 
and see if it's necessary for you to be so stuck in winning that particular battle. I hate to use the word battle and war, but ultimately this is what people understand. Say ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is for them, our, cho our children, to grow into strong, independent adults. So if you're doing a skirmish down here that is going to damage the ultimate goal, that's what you want to look at. And if you can let this go here, perhaps let the hot stove aspect of things uh, <laughs> teach this moment because you don't have to, then allow that to happen. Our energy is our most precious resource, and we take it for granted. Uh, and it's um, it granted, provided we respect the source. Do you know that we're electric? We are electric, and we tap into boundless energy. We're made up of electrons and protons and positrons that are constantly firing on each other and attracting and repelling, and, and, and this is on a cellular level. And when you mix that with the spiritual aspect of ourselves and the divine aspect of ourselves, can you feel the power surge just considering all of that? It's not necessary to do overkill on the energy aspect and the power aspect of things. So, how do we deal with this ever-looming power and struggle issue? Just recognize it in the moment with your feelings. And when you begin to feel off balance, especially if you're pushing against something that may not even necessarily need that push, just relax. Tap into, well, I call it the love tap. You, you know, like the beer tap? <laughs> I call it the love tap. Tap in, tap, with, tap within to that energy source. Get filled up and then address the issue. Just stop in the moment and deal with yourself. Don't bring 110 voltage to a 4G situation. Choose your battles. Choose the opportunities that you have to make your point. And they're stronger ones when you're focused in in that way. What do you do to give yourself that extra jolt of divine energy? Meditation is my favorite means. If you are wanting some help with that aspect of things, do connect with me through the parenting assessment link we have here and display on the uh, show. And I will give you a complimentary parenting breakthrough session. It's a $250 value for free. And we can explore what it takes for you to have it um, in such a way that your power tripping is minimized. Some of it has to go on because, you know, we d we're teaching here. But um, I'm here for you. So what if we continue with these power trips? Well, have you ever seen the whacked out exchanges people have sometimes with their kids? I mean, it can be pretty astonishing, actually, just observing that, seeing it. Are you engaged in this kind of a back and forth exchange on a, on a regular basis with your kids? If we continue with this kind of um, uh, energy with our children, then we are promoting their use of this kind of energy outside of, out in the outside world. So, have you ever seen <laughs> the whacked out exchanges that parents are having sometimes with their children and with their, with their significant other, other family members? It goes on all the time. Are you engaged in this kind of exchange in your household on a regular basis? Sometimes it's necessary. Like I said, you might have to bring 4G to a 4G situation. <sighs> but these ego trips, another name for it, are not what gets the thing done. It doesn't get the job done. It doesn't get the understanding in there. It just causes resentment. 
I mean, if you look on a global scale, what we have are a bunch of, uh, quite a few politicians and terrorists and uh, power individuals who are power tripping all over the place. Our children, we are looking to make sure that they grow into someone a little more, a lot more in life, you know, uh, enlightened than that. It's nationally, locally, nationally, community-wise, we mirror that on a smaller scale. But again, it all starts in the home. Peace is not a four-letter word. Love is. <laughs> Let's use both of those words interchangeably in our homes. Your voice is not the only means of getting your point across. Save your breath sometimes. We will take a break now, and we'll be back with Mr. Cedric Bertelli. Welcome back to the Save Your Breath show where we help parents eliminate, eliminate the stress and aggravation of raising children. Our guest today is Mr. Cedric Bertelli. Thank you for joining us, Cedric. Thank you for having me in the show. I wanted to tell you a little about Cedric. He has been studying sensory memory since 2009 and specifically how the sensory memory offers a, a, a direct connection to the origin of our disruptive emotional patterns and allows us to regulate them. He has studied with Mr. Uh, Luc Nikon, yeah. uh, the originator of the ATP research program. He has great knowledge on the origins of human beings' emotional responses and traumas, and became an expert at resolving disruptive but habitual emotional responses such as phobias, fears, um, depression, angers, long-lasting traumas, and anxieties. Mm -hmm. And he is the director of TP English World, in charge of trainings, communications, and education around the research on emotional regulation. Thank you for joining us, Cedric. Well, I'm very happy to be here. And it's my understanding that you're able to do all of these things for an individual in minutes. Uh, you mean well, one at a time. <laughs> yeah, resolving the difficulty, yes. Yes, the, yes. The process is, uh, is actually quite fast, yes. Yeah, it's a very fast process. It yeah. saves a lot of time. Uh, it's very different from traditional uh, therapies. That's true. So we have a number of questions that I wanted to ask you because uh, of our parents' uh, curiosity. Okay. Uh, and since you have some insight into these emotional issues, from a communication standpoint, since that's mm -hmm. the focus of this quarter of the year, okay. what can we do when we feel that we're about to lose our patience as parents? The first thing I would say is to stop and take care of our own emotion as parents uh, for several reasons. First, that will uh, allow us not to regret what we might say or do later on. Mm -hmm. And then, when we speak to a child, or even between us, mm -hmm. uh, as partners, or if we speak from a grounded place and not from an emotional place, the message, the impact of the message is much more powerful. Mm -hmm. mm. So it's not, it's not difficult to take care of our own emotion when we feel like the emotion is coming up in us. Uh, I can, can I tell you a little trick that like parents can do? Um, yes, is it about the communication aspect of things? Well, it's about communicating with their own emotion. Okay, and that communicates out to... Uh, to the child. Everything Definitely. is a communication ultimately, isn't it? Definitely. Okay, well, uh, yes. You, want, you don't want my trick. If you don't want my trick, I don't give it to oh, you. Oh, we want it all. Okay, good, very we good. <laughs> well, when you see, when the parents feel the emotion, uh, before acting or, or reacting, I should say, just go in a place where you're not going to be bothered by the children, for example, and simply close your eyes and pay attention to your physical sensations mm -hmm. and only your physical sensations. Uh, observe the sensations as they evolve without doing anything, without analyzing them or trying to change them until you feel calm. And once you feel calm, 
you can open your eyes and go on and deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, and when you do this, is, uh, does this cause you to not get upset ever again or, or is it about that specific type of situation that you are uh, now cured from having uh, it's a, very a good reaction to? It's a very good question. Actually, yes. if you do this whole process, mm -hmm. it's, uh, you're tapping into a natural ability for self-emotional regulation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you do the whole thing well, the emotion you were feeling regarding this situation, but the emotion mm -hmm. will not come back ever again. Now, what's interesting, if, even if you don't have time to do the whole process, if you have one second, if you just stop, close your eyes and pay attention to your physical sensation, that's going to reset your emotional response. Hmm. And you can communicate to your child from a grounded and peaceful place. Yes. I cannot tell you how many parents told me that, for example, for a situation such as the kid leaving toys all over the place, mm. okay. instead of going there and scream at the kid one more time, when they did this work of like, okay, take a minute and tap into my own sensation, calm down, and then address the problem. Mm -hmm. Once the emotion of the parents is not here, what is amazing to witness is that the behavior of the child changes as well. As you know, we feed each other from each other energy. Yes. So if the child subconsciously, unconsciously, the child doesn't do it in purpose. Yes. But once the child feels like there is no more emotion there from the parent's perspective on the parent's side, that doesn't fuel his own behavior anymore. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you that if we work on our own emotion, that change is completely the old dynamic, the old dynamic of situations. And the situation that used to bother you as a parent will not even happen anymore because it doesn't fuel anything mm -hmm. anymore in between us. Wow. You know, what I hear you saying, and this is something that I'm uh, often finding uh, is true. I've said it a different way many times myself, but this is perfect because it has to do with... Um, attention mm -hmm. and uh, the needing and the feeding of negative energy. So in this communication, if you're feeding negative energy, it's exciting and I, I guess emotionally the, the children are attached to that energy. They want more of that. If they're not getting the proper attention, they'll take the negative attention. You got and it. And they'll do the thing over again to get you that negative it. But now we have another energy that we can introduce that they can now crave and, and want more of, which is peaceful. Exactly. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I have uh, another question. Yes. Uh, now, from a communication standpoint. Yes. Um, I see that kids are often really afraid uh, sometimes. Um, and everything that we tell them does not seem to calm them down. Yeah. Why is that? You know, our emotional reaction are unconscious. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that. Uh, when we feel an emotion, when an emotion comes in us, first it comes through the body, through the sensory memory, which is a specific set of physical sensation. Uh, yes. Okay. That comes, it's very strong, it's very powerful, especially when you're a child, especially for a younger child. What comes after this set of physical sensation, this set of tension, is what we understand as emotion. Okay. So, uh, let's say a child is afraid of the dark, you know, or is very upset when one of the parents is leaving the room. So you can try to explain to the kid that you're going to come back at the end of the day, that there is no point of being afraid of the dark. But what the child feels in his body or in her body is, is very much here. It's physical and, to be quite honest, it's uncontrollable. Mm -hmm. We learn to control our emotion you know, with experience, with time. But for a child, a younger child, even a child until 10 years old, it's very difficult to control and to deal with this pain because we really talk about physical tension. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you start talking, when you try talking to the intellect or to the emotion of the child, sure, you can calm them down after a while, but that's not the best way. If you want to calm a child, if you want a child to go back to a neutral place, to stop being afraid, talk, communicate to the body of the child directly. Ah, to the body directly. To the body directly. And how would you do that? It's actually quite simple. When you see the child is in distress, upset, is throwing a tantrum, or just afraid of something, just ask the child, honey, put your hand where you feel something in your body. Show me where you feel something in your body with your hand. Mm -hmm. 
The child, it's amazing to see. It's, uh, the child's going to put his hand where he feels something in his body right away. It's a bit like when you knock yourself, like your elbow. Mm -hmm. You've been missing the chair yes. twice. Here. Yes. If you knock your, your elbow on the chair, you automatically put your hand where it hurts. If you ask a child, which is very much in touch with the body actually, mm -hmm. put your hand where you feel something, boom! It's going to put his hand or her hand wherever he feels something. To do that, it's amazing. You're going to see right away that the emotional reaction stops. When the child was actually upset or fearful, the fact to put him in touch, himself, touching himself, his body, where he feels something in the mm -hmm. body, is going to stop the emotional reaction. Mm -hmm. wow. That's the best way. It stops it. Right away. As human beings, we can be two years old or 75 or 100 years old. We cannot be in the emotion and in the sensation. Mm -hmm. So now when they do this, let's say they're afraid of the dark. Yes. Does that stop them from being afraid of the dark or do, they, or do you just have to do that over and over again with them until they... Great uh, question. Uh, yeah. Great question. Actually, to put the hand, put one hand on the body uh, will not stop the fear yeah, once yeah. and for all. But if you want to help the child to, uh, to stop the fear once and for all, mm -hmm. what you will have to do is ask him to put his hand when he feels something and he's upset. That's going to cut the emotional reaction. Ask the child if he's ready to go with you into this little process to close his eyes and to put his other hand somewhere else in the body. And then to follow, to show you with the hand what it feels, what the sensation are doing. Most of the time, the children that do things like this, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> if they start to follow the sensation with their hand, yes. you have all the chances in the world to allow this kid to let go, to resolve once and for all the situation. Once and for all. You know, I did a session with my dad last mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. on his fear of the dark. Yes. My, my, my dad is a 60, year woman, uh, 60, 60 years old uh, lumberjack. Can wow. you imagine the man was afraid of the dark all his life? Wow. And we have all like fears like this. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, that is, I'm sure that the parents really picked up some powerful stuff for helping to resolve some things with their children. Thank you so much for sharing that with us today. My pleasure. My pleasure. Well, that is our show for today. Thank you very much for joining us, and I will see you again in two weeks here at the Save Your Breath Show.